makers and welcome back to another vlog. If you are new here, a special welcome to you. I'm Joanna and this is Stitching the High Notes where with each vlog I share what has brought me creative joy over the last couple of weeks, whether it be knitting, sewing, crochet, cross stitch, cooking, video games, you name it. And my hope with each vlog is to inspire and encourage you to nourish your own creativity and to stitch joy or the high notes into your everyday life. How are you? I hope that you are well. It's been a couple of weeks again. Um, and there, I shared on social media a couple of days ago, things are moving and shaking, as I like to say, behind the scenes. I'm okay, all is well, but as a result, I'm needing to really practice what I preach here on Stitching the High Notes, which, and is also my intention for this year, which is to be present in order to sustain and keep my creative joy and flow going because I feel so centered and grounded when that is intact. <laughs> so as a result, some things have had to be on pause and, you know, schedules have had to be in flux a little bit here and there. So I appreciate it. I know you all understand. I've heard from several of you and you are like, you got, it's all good girl. Life ebbs and flows. <laughs> so I really appreciate it. Um, and it probably will be that way for a little bit, but I'm so Glad to be here today. I have lots to share with you all. I have an update on my sock whip at the moment. I have a new acquisition that's cross stitch related and a recipe that I made uh, for St. Patrick's Day to share with you all that I might have shared in the past, but if not, I wanna share it again. And a little bit more that has brought me creative joy over the last few weeks. So without further ado, if you haven't already, grab your knitting and stitching and or stitching a lovely beverage and let's catch up. The first thing I wanna share with you is my sock whip because also I'm excited to share it with you but also because I wanna knit on it while I chat with you all today. <laughs> but oh my goodness, I've done so much. I think considering having to be ebbing and flowing with my schedule at the moment. This is where I was at in the last vlog. And I've knit all of this. I did the heel. I'm doing a shadow wrap heel, which is a short row heel. Um, I follow a tutorial by Denise of Earth Tones Girl uh, on her channel, and I'll leave a link down below in the show notes in the description. And I'm just about done with the leg where I am then going to do I think I'm gonna do a two by two twisted rib. We'll see, <laughs> we'll see if I remember that I want to do that, but I kinda wanna do something a little fancy. Uh, this colorway is so lovely. This is from my stash. Um, I think I got this a couple of years ago and it's actually been dyed up fairly recently. I don't know if it's still in the shop. This is by Hannah of the Corner of Craft uh, Chromatic Yarns. And this is in the Jazz is Chaos colorway, which is inspired by Critical Role, which I'll leave a link down to below, which is a Dungeons and Dragons live stream game that I've watched for years and years. Uh, and it's based on a character, um, but it's also, I picked it because it was a wonderful thing to cast on during St. Patrick's Day week. Um, and with the spring, happy spring, by the way, happy autumn, if you're down in the Southern Hemisphere, which has happened since we visited last. Um, and it's sparkly, I'll, I'll get, the, it's a sparkle sock base. Let me get the ball band here. What is it? Here it is. Here's the logo chromatic yarns and jazz is chaos <laughs> something that the character said on an episode and it's on the sparkle sock base which is 75% superwash merino and 20% nylon 5% lurex um, it is a hundred grams 437 yards and here is it wound up in the skein. And as you can see, I'm not doing a contrasting toe, heel, and cuff. I just wanted to knit, 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 and keep going. I'm definitely loving the technique that I've learned for no holes. And I'm kind of like, <laughs> I mean, this side is better, but no holes here of, of uh, that I learned from Denise, which is when you 
start to knit in the round again after doing the heel that you make sure that if you're doing magic loop that the wire is underneath the needle and she shows it in various tutorials but yeah I'm like oh I, I love that I finally learned that I love learning new techniques it's so wonderful and I can't wait to learn more as I cast on new projects and pick up other projects but yeah the other thing I wanted to share with you is my stitch marker which now I can move back up and this is uh, oldie bitty goodie as well by forest charms uh, link is also down below it's a little crystal and it's green so I thought it was appropriate and I'm doing magic loop as I mentioned and I use 2.25 millimeter needles us ones uh, and I love it so I'm gonna take it off my sock blocker which I had to get out I haven't used these in a really long time I got this from knit picks I think years and years ago and I rarely block my socks they're more so for showing y'all <laughs> progress and whatnot so uh, yes let me get started on knitting on this and then let me look at my show notes to see what the next fun thing that I wanted to share with you was so a couple of uh, other inspiring, fresh new things to usher in spring before I share some cross stitch with you is that I got a haircut. <laughs> I went on a whim on Friday um, to go get a haircut because it was long overdue. The last haircut that I got just wasn't looking real good after it grew out a little bit. And plus the texture of my hair has changed um, the older I get. I'm over 40 now. I have perimenopause for the most part. And I am an all natural color, which I love, all the gray that's coming in. So the texture of my hair has really changed. So I needed a haircut that had more lift in the back. So I did the bob that has more layers and a little bit more angled. And so it's promoting all the curl again and the wave. Uh, and then I needed new products, so I got some new products that work a lot better in my hair. So, so happy, feel so much better. It was so uh, well-timed with spring, and it felt like fresh and new, and to have it off my neck, you know, anytime that I start having to wear it up all the time so that it gets off my neck, I know it's time to get a haircut. <laughs> so that felt really good. The other thing that's been really inspiring me, but also giving me allergies, <laughs> is all of the trees blooming. And I'm looking outside and one of the trees outside is now full of leaves. Um, I was at the grocery store the other day and uh, there were spring bl uh, blooms and little buds on the trees again. Um, I still need to go down by the river for another river walk to see if anything has been blooming down there on the river walk near my place um, because those trees are going to be coming back full force again as well. I live in Sacramento now and it's known as the city of trees and rivers so and it's my first spring here so I'm prepared and already feeling the onslaught of allergies <laughs> so but the colors and also the fabrics uh, that I'm currently working with that I'll be chatting with you all about if you're interested about an upcoming shop update at the end of the vlog here are just really bringing me so much joy and um, it's officially here even though it was like 33 degrees this morning <laughs> along the spring theme here cross stitch so I think I shared maybe on Instagram definitely maybe on a vlog here a little bit ago that Satsuma Street who is my go-to favorite cross stitch designer came out with more ornament kits this time Easter themed or spring themed and oh my god I couldn't resist I got them <laughs> So I'm definitely, when I get my next shop update up and running in the next couple of days, more on that a little bit later, I'm going to the carrot <laughs> that I'm dangling in front of myself. My reward is going to be, probably I'm going to start with this guy. So these are ornament kits that I love. I have just, I think I have all of the um, Halloween ones and I have some of the Christmas ones and the holiday ones. I'm making my way through the Halloween ones um, because I'm going to create like a Halloween tree. I'm going to start putting up my Christmas tree or my holiday tree um, at 
in October so I can make it Halloween themed and then fall themed and then Christmas themed. I'm not gonna put one out. I'm not gonna put it out this early to make it Easter themed. So I'll probably get some like a small like white tree at Joann's or Michael's or something like that to hang these cuties on. But they're so cute. I will link down below. These are called spring majigs, and there are four different sets. So these are the bunnies. Look how cute. So all of the sets come with i'll read it off another one here you can kind of see sorry about the glare look at the little cotton tails so cute so they all come with the color charts 14 count perforated paper dmc embroidery floss uh, beads sequins tapestry needle and finishing instructions um, you'll need to buy backing paper or felt and thread for hanging or glue and scissors and on the uh, Instagram story, she showed that she had like sparkly, I think it was probably cardstock paper for the backing for these. And I'm totally gonna do that because that's what, honestly, what fully caught my eye to get these. <laughs> I mean, I love her stuff, but I was like, oh yeah, I gotta have that sparkly backing. So I'll be getting that also from like Joann's or Michael's or something, but so cute. So these are the bunnies. I just, oh, I love everything she does. And these are the eggs, very Ukrainian eggs, which I really, really love. These are the buds that I've been seeing around and that I'm feeling here. <laughs> and then we have the birds and oh, it's so nice to hear bird song again in the mornings. I've been trying to open my windows for about five minutes or so just to get the air circulating every morning and it feels so good to hear the birds now back. And then finally we have butterflies. So cute. The, the shape of these are really interesting, super mod, um, kind of, you know, whimsical <laughs> and totally within this style. So. I love those too. So I can't wait to start some of those. I have been cooking again, which has been bringing me so much joy and is an, such another creative outlet for me, trying different recipes. I've been making a lot of bread. I finally found a every week bread recipe that's grain free. I have a lot of food allergies if you're new here. So it's always been a quest for me to find something that tastes really good and provides, you know, the comfort that you're wanting, especially from bread. Um, and yeah, but I found a really good one um, that I'll link down below if you're interested. Uh, and as a result, I've just gotten the baking bug. bug. <laughs> I think I feel really settled in my new home, which at what point do you start saying that it's, stop saying that it's a new home? Cause I'm coming up on a year of living here in July. So is that right? No, in, yeah, in July, I think. <laughs> Woo. So anyway, but uh, I love, I just love my kitchen and my space. And so I've been cooking up a storm. Plus I um, uh, get a, food subscription box weekly, a grocery box and meal kind of preparation, not sponsored, uh, Hungry Root, which I'll also link down below if you're interested. I have a little referral code that you get a little discount if you're interested. But um, so I've been cooking a lot more there too as well. And the recipe that I wanted to share with you is Irish soda bread. And it's by really my favorite blog uh, to get recipes from specifically if I don't get them from a recipe book, uh, Paleo Running Mama. Uh, I've made a version of Irish soda bread using a simple Mills uh, like pancake mix, I think it was before, um, but I wanted to make something from scratch and not use like a pre-made mix. And I love it. I thought it was so good. I'd probably use a little bit less salt and probably more, probably a little bit more raisins in there. I was a little stingy on the raisins, I think. I like a, I like a raisiny Irish soda bread. Um, and I think I also cooked it slightly too long. Um, I tend to go to the higher um, cooking time with my oven, I have found, but I think for this particular bread, I probably could have done, because of the raisins, 
um, on the top they got a little bit too crispy so I think it probably would have been a lot floofier and um, maybe not as salty or something if I had done that but so good you put a little bit of butter on there um, you could put a little bit of jam it's not really sweet um, I don't think most Irish soda breads really are um, but yeah it was really really good a little bit of kind of more lifey kind of update because I had a lot of y'all reach out to me to make sure that I was okay <laughs> before I share kind of some shop news um, but uh, the rain y'all we had another atmospheric river um, at least one since I chatted with you last on Tuesday this past Tuesday I'm sitting down to chat with you on Sunday March 26th is that the date today Yes. <laughs> um, so this past Tuesday, we had another one and I actually needed to commute down to work and into San Francisco. And I thought, okay, I'll be okay. Like, you know, it'll be fine. Nobody was prepared <laughs> for what came our way. So, and I have a, some video here, which I'll show you of the day. So I headed out early to kind of, I thought to beat some of the rain to ensure if there were any delays, I still got home at a godly hour. Um, Cause I take Amtrak up uh, back home and I take a bus from the city across the Bay Bridge uh, and then go to Emeryville and then catch the train and head up. And when I left, I think it was about 2.45 ish PM. It was so windy and so it was starting to like drench rain. And I was like, this is, this feels weird. It feels especially like Oklahoma, which has felt like up here in Sacramento. I kind of expected a little bit more cause the atmosphere is a little bit more like Oklahoma. I went to grad school in Oklahoma, so that's why. But I was like, this is weird, and I'm really glad that I'm leaving now because I just knew it was gonna get worse and worse. So I get to the bus, and we, uh, you know, it was a little slow going to get onto the bridge, but I thought, okay, everybody's just being slow because it's windy. And then we crossed a, a, we turned around a corner, and you know, when you, in a city, if it's windy, the wind, it becomes a wind tunnel effect. And, it was insane. I was taking video of it as we were like getting onto the ramp onto the bridge just because I was like, this is crazy. And I had trouble like focusing my camera, but you could hear it in the bus. Um, and then we got onto the bridge and you could see the bay. It looked like a hurricane in the Bermuda Triangle. It was bananas. I just, in all of my years of living in the Bay Area, I had never seen it like that ever, ever. And I was in shock. Everybody on the bus was quiet and the bus was rocking back and forth a little bit. Uh, every car was going really slow and it. we knew we were gonna miss our originally scheduled train. Um, and then I would say about a quarter of the, or like a third of the way over the bridge, I had to go hop onto a meeting, onto a Zoom call. So I thankfully was really distracted because I had to take the meeting and, um, you know, it was kind of quelling my anxieties of <laughs> the situation we were all in with the weather. We got finally over to Emeryville to the train station and I was still on this, um, zoom call and I could hear you know in the background that the the you know I was on mute so nobody none of my colleagues heard what was going on and off and on I was turning off my camera and I could hear like the station manager like having really long monologues of updates and everybody was kind of huddled in the train station and it, the weather was it was just blown it was like six I thought definitely 60 mile an hour winds and gusts at least and um, and then, you know, we were delayed, delayed. I couldn't like look up what was going on with the train or what was happening. And then we were in a place with the Zoom meeting that I got a couple of text messages from my friend Cheryl, which was kind of unusual. 
Um, Cheryl, if you've been a long time viewer, she's a, a former, you know, she is a singer and she's a former colleague of mine from my chorus days and but one of my besties and she was writing me and saying are you okay i just saw the news about the bay bridge uh if you need a place to stay tonight you always have a room don't worry i've got you something like that i was like what is happening <laughs> so i i texted her back to kind of calm her and i was like i'm okay i we are already got over to emeryville i'm chilling at the train station i think our train's delayed and sorry this is a long story but i'm you know we're knitting together so <laughs> um but uh yeah i just was like okay well, the minute this meeting is over i gotta figure out what's happening so the meeting was still going over when the train finally arrived and they could like see me on zoom we had to like we all like were running out and then they said no come back in then we were running out to get the train finally we got on my hair was like fine all over the place as we were finishing up the meeting and i sat down on the train and finally like i had stopped uh the meeting and heard everything that was going on so train wise uh we were on a delayed train all of the trains were delayed because a tree hit an earlier train about like three stops up ahead and derailed the back car <laughs> so all of the tracks were having to be shifted around and everything um and i just was like hey i have my seat this train said that they'll be moving even if it's slowly after the day that i had had i just was like so grateful i had this guy this is why i have progressed so much on this sock <laughs> and i was like okay we'll just go with the flow here i'll get home when i can thankfully i had gotten over the bridge earlier otherwise like then and a lot of this you might have already seen on like the national news on the bay bridge literally just after we had crossed uh the first half of the bay bridge a big rig a semi truck flipped over because of the wind which i guess was up to 70 miles an hour or something on the bridge and it flipped over and blocked all of the lanes i think they got it shifted enough to like open up one lane and people were like stuck in the city essentially or like my colleagues who left work and lived in the east bay where i used to live they left at like 6 30 they didn't get home till like 10 or 10 30 at night because of all of the traffic in the city and just all of the pathways to get anywhere it was crazy Phew. <laughs> i'm so glad i left early um but i was only delayed i would say like an hour and a half uh, total and i got home about eight o'clock but needless to say i was counting my blessings I was so grateful I was on a safe train and you know by the time that we really had started to uh, move along on the train like the big what turned out to be a cyclone like storm system you could like kind of see it had started to wind down a little bit so I felt pretty safe crossing it uh, crossing you know like bridges and stuff on the train but Oh, what a day, which the ripple effect of the adrenaline rush just the last week or so was just crazy. So I had planned like on Monday and I thought, well, maybe I'll be like just a little bit late and I'll vlog on Thursday or something um, to kind of get caught up and visit with you all and share things and try to get back on a weekly um, vlogging schedule just was like I have to read the signs here like there are a lot of things happening out even the weather other things that I just need to go with the flow right now <laughs> and be present and recover and process and yeah so that was the rain and even with all of the crazy weather and storms I know everybody's been having it in some effect the horrible tornadoes that happened the other day and you know out here the floods the crazy snow up in the mountains you know our drought restrictions were lifted and i'm just really grateful for the rain at the same time and um yeah but whew, wild a little bit of shock news before i close this vlog for today uh a big 
shift is happening with the shop y'all in that I am changing up the shop update model so to speak for a variety of reasons. I've done this in the past but I'm going to be doing this going forward and that will be that all updates will now be pre-orders and there are two big reasons for that. One is the cost of goods is really high right now as you all know because hashtag inflation <laughs> and this will allow me to order the exact amount of materials that I need and be more cost effective. So I'm really excited to be shifting for this purpose. And the other main reason is because I need more time to make the backs. So my making time for my business now is only on the weekends and only partial parts of the day on the weekends because I want to be with my family. I want to play video games with my nephew and <laughs> hang out with my family and go to their hot tub, which I did the other day. Oh, so glorious. Um, and yeah, so as a result, I need to stretch out the timeline of making these bags because I'm a solo bag maker and entrepreneur. So I'm so excited to be doing this. I feel like a weight of relief. This is gonna make things a lot easier for myself. I think for you all too, there'll still be monthly updates. Um, so, and that, and I've planned out, I've gone full Virgo, <laughs> and I've planned three updates worth of timelines. Um, and it's looking like it should be really good. There might be a few adjustments once I get started production wise, but I'm really excited to, to be doing this going forward. And a lot of my fellow bag makers do this, so I'm just late to the party. <laughs> so this first pre-order shop update will be Tuesday, March 28th, so just in a couple of days. There'll be a few more um, bag uh, quantities in there because I'll have a stretched out timeline, but there will be a set amount, but I will be opening them up, uh, the listings, the pre-order listings on Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific, and they'll remain open until they are sold out or until the cutoff time, which will be the end of the day on Sunday, April 2nd. And then once that uh, cutoff is done, the listings will be uh, closed and I will be ordering all of the materials that are needed and getting to work on making your bags. The timeline for those will be six to seven weeks because as a, I'm a solo entrepreneur and solo businesswoman, so it's just me. <laughs> um, and it might get a little quicker here and there, um, but at, that is really truly the amount of time that it takes to make bags specifically. So hopefully y'all are good with that. I think you will. I think just about every bag maker out there, that's about the timeline that they have, unless they're very lucky for this to be their full-time job. And even then, it takes a long time to make bags. So, um, And I'm going to have three bag collections, which I'll be showing you some video here of. There is a Sage Spring collection, really beautiful pinks and peach with a little bit of turquoise and sage leaves, um, watercolor spring colorway. It just brings a huge, like cleansing, joyful smile to my face when I see this fabric. And it's paired with a kind of rose peach colored linen that I also used for the magnolia season. So I was very lucky that I had that in stock and it looks really good with the, with the fabric. Um, they'll be in four different types of bags, the sweater bag, the drawstring bag, the notions bag, and the needlework pouch. All of the dimensions can be found on the website. And then the second of the three collections is, I think I'm going to call this um, spring and flight or something like that. So stay tuned to what the final name is going to be, but it's not just butterflies. It's really beautiful. Um, just spring, like flying insects, maybe spring insects or something like that. But it has butterflies, my beloved monarch butterflies, it has bees, it has dragonflies. It's just so beautiful. And it's by a designer that I've um, purchased her uh, designs from Spoonflower many times over the years and it's just beautiful. I have it paired with a black linen which really makes all of the colors of the insects and flying critters really really beautiful. 
And then the third collection is a cheeky one that just brings me a lot of joy. I think uh, hopefully y'all will find a lot of joy in it too, but it's video game, a gamer gal um, <laughs> fabric that just, I love video games right now. I've just found so much creative inspiration and joy and just, just pure joy in playing video games again, especially with my nephew, but just even on my own. And I thought it would be lovely to have a gaming um, themed collection. And I found this fabric and it's just so cute. And I thought, yeah, I thought perhaps a lot of you out there would also enjoy it as well. It's got pinks and purples and just, oh, so cute. And I have new stitch markers to go with these as well. There's a little silver butterfly. Those will be ready to ship. So, um, you know, I'll have those in there. And then also little game control in three different colors, um, stitch markers as well, which will also be ready to ship. So with the pre-orders, just a reminder that if you pop any like remaining backs that are in the shop or any other stitch markers and you purchase that along with your pre-order bags, um, those won't ship until the pre-orders are ready and made and ready to ship in six to seven weeks. So if you want something like right away, make a separate order. And yeah, I'll be sending out a newsletter and posting on Instagram the next couple of days, but I'm really excited about this going forward and I appreciate all of your support and hearing from so many of you saying you need to do what you need to do to make it easy on yourself and I, I'm just very grateful. So Yay. with that, I'm going to close this vlog. I hope that you all are well. Happy spring, happy fall. If you have not yet and would like to, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to know when new vlogs are up here on the channel. You can follow me on all of the social medias, which are linked down in the, subs in the subscription, in the description box below. And if you would like more behind the scenes content, two to three daily vlogs a week, live stream chats, Zoom stitch and chats, a Discord channel, all kinds of fun, nitty community, fun stuff, and want to support the channel here please consider going over to patreon and becoming a member over there no worries if not i'm happy to have you here and love visiting with you with each vlog so i will see you all again very soon bye mm -hmm.